Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and to present some of our data. Unfortunately, I do not speak your language. The only word I can pronounce properly is Dobre. Therefore, I have to give my talk in English and I do my very best. So, when talking about placenta, the question is, is it a gold mine or is it just a waste product? And as you can see here from the PubMed papers that have been published from 1950 up to June 2022, in total 75,000 papers, you can see there is an exponential increase in the last 10 days suggesting that we are talking about a gold mine. I'm dividing my talk in two parts. First of all, I would like to give you a short overview about the clinical data we have so far in our lab. And the second part, I will give you a short overview about the clinical situation we are currently on. So why placenta? Well, the ephemeral placenta is a lovely source of cells, cells that are young, healthy, they haven't been in touch with no environment toxins and they normally do not harbor any genetic disorders. These cells, and that is one of the key messages, have a multifactorial secretion profile of many cytokines, what we call a slow release system. And they play a significant role in tissue repair, regeneration, cancer therapies, and in the correction of genetic disorders. So we are focusing in our lab on, in total, six different parts of this organ. The stromal cells, trophoblastic cells, the chorionic cells, the amnionic cells, methanchymal stem cells, and the latest baby in this concert, the exosomes. Exosomes are very small, tiny little bubbles with encapsulated with a, liquid, with a bilayer of lipids, and inside of these little bubbles is microRNA. 50% of your personal shape, when you look into the mirror, is due to microRNA, and that is a very critical component, as we will see in a minute. So in our lab, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, the placenta comes in, once again, we check that it is complete, what you as gynecologists normally do. And then we look, in that case, this example shows you the chorionic cells. We cut the placenta into pieces. Then, as you can see here, Oop, there. Then we look for the cells of interest. These are then cut into small pieces. They are digested enzymatically. And on the lower right part, you can see the cells of interest. They are then either expanded, characterized, or just frozen down for future applications. So, as I mentioned earlier, we have three different parts of placenta. We have what placenta cells can do. We can use them for the regeneration or tissue repair. They have a significant anti-tumor activity. I'm a hematologist. And of course, they can use or can be used for the treatment of genetic disorders. And we would like to focus on the first two parts in the preclinical talk of my talk, the regenerative activity and the anti-tumor activity. So these are two cells, cell types, the amnionic cells on the left and the MSCs, the mesenchymal stem cells. And the interesting part why these cells have an overwhelming capacity is that they can differentiate into different cells, pancreas, bones, liver, CNS, cornea cells, and the same applies with the mesenchymal stem cells, bone and cartilage adipocytes, CNS, liver, myocard. And the amnionic cells are even more potent because they have a higher telomerase activity, which is an indicator of proliferation. So 
just to give you an example what we have done in our lab, and we look at the chorionic cells I've sh shown you a minute ago, you can see using different experimental conditions, you can differentiate them into adipocytes on the left, chondroblasts in the middle, and osteoblasts on the right side. So, can we use them in cancer therapy? And that is very interesting when you look at the upper left, these are renal cell carcinomas, and they have been treated with exosomes from placenta cells. And what you can see here, black is the control, and you can see here, the green and the red line, there is a significant anti-tumor activity of these placenta-derived exosomes. And the same is shown on the right side. And when you look at the bottom one, three different tumors have been looked after. First of all, the hepatocellular carcinoma, malignant melanoma, and glioblastomas. And you can see here, these tumors, ladies and gentlemen, these tumors never come back after being treated with placenta exosomes. So, can we use that clinically? Of course we can. This was one of the pivotal studies, a pilot one with diabetes mellitus type 2, 10 patients, a small cohort, but anyway, they have been treated with 1.35 10 to the 6 methanchymal stem cells, placenta derived. And as you know, now these cells can be differentiated into other cells. In that case, they can be used to be differentiated in pancreas insult cell type. And what you see here, the results, there was an improved a significant improved liver and kidney function, C-peptide levels increased, and in four out of 10 patients, we saw a significant reduction of the insulin dose used and no significant adverse events. That is something that is not unexpected because placenta cells do not express HLA, so they are immune evasive. Similar thing with chronic kidney failure, randomized placebo control phase two trial, in that case 40 patients, they were treated with placenta-derived exosomes, 100 microgram per kick, day one and day eight, and the results after 12 months, no adverse events, decrease of creatinine levels by 50%, and the increase of the GFR twofold. That was the application on the left side, the exosomes were injected directly into the artery of the, re of, of, the sp of the kidneys. And on the upper right, you see the increase of the GFR, and the upper left, and, you, and, in the upper, and on the right side, the down uh, the cartoon, you see there is a significant, a very significant decrease of the creatinine levels. And the same, as I mentioned, I'm a hematologist. We look for the acute graft versus host disease. This was a Norwegian study with 44 patients, acute GVH, GVHD following allogenetic stem cell transplantation. These cells were treated with human placenta stem cells, in that case, deciduous cells. And they received 1.5, 10 to the six cells per cake with a medium dosage of two applications. And what we see here is a transient infusion-related reaction, three out of 44, which adds weight to the proposal that these cells do not express HLA, a molecule on the surface, in other words, immune evasive. And we see the medium overall survival after 12 months, 67% which is significantly better when compared to historic controls. And these are the overall survival graphs. 34 patients out of 44 were eligible for evaluation and once again, an improvement when compared with historic controls. So clinical trials, just to summarize, when we look at the cell populations I've shown you in one of my first slides, the trophoblastic ones and the cranionic ones are preclinical. They are not in clinical trials yet, especially the trophoblast cells from the placenta can be used to treat preeclampsia and growth retardation. Cranionic cells, mainly tissue repair and regeneration. 
the stromal cells, the mesenchymal stem cell, the amniotic cells, and the exosomes are in late stage clinical development, even in phase three. And some of these products have already been approved, which I can show you here. These are the five candidates, the usual suspect that has been approved, and human allergenic um, and, and uh, amniotic cells. The brand name is Alephizel. It's used to treat fistulas from Crohn's disease. It has an EMA approval in 018. And we have some others, as you can see here, human uh, mesenchymal stem cells for bone marrow, for the steroid refractory, GVHD. And what I would like to show you uh, is the expanded mesenchymal stem cells from cold blood, which is CARTI-STEM. They can be used for uh, therapy of cartilage degeneration. And I'm one of the candidates because I have a ruptured disc since yesterday. And I've told by the physician that in three months I will get these ones to get the tissue repaired. So I'm the first victim here in Switzerland. So take home message. Due to the immunologic properties, as I mentioned several times, no HLA expression, placenta stem cells and exosomes can be administered without HLA matching, allergenic, and without immunosuppression. We can even treat mice disease with human placenta cells. That works. It's unbelievable, but it works. This will allow the development of allergenic off-the-shelf drugs in the near future, putative indication, as I mentioned earlier, tissue repair, correction of genetic disorders, cancer therapy, and no GVHD was seen in any of these ongoing clinical trials so far. This is very exciting and thrilling. Thank you very much, and again, Dobre.